All right, welcome back to another episode of Sports Talk with Sam Teets. I'd like to remind you guys, you can find this either as a podcast, uh, just called Sports Talk with Sam Teets on Apple Podcasts, or you could go and find this as an actual YouTube video on my YouTube channel. Just search Sam Teets in the search bar. It'll pop up. I'm basically the only one there is right now. You can also go find any kind of links to the articles you want. It'll probably be under the YouTube video, but you can also look for the articles on my Twitter page at Sam underscore Teets 33. I have pinned my newsletter, Sports Talk with Sam Teets. I pinned it to the top of, the, of that page. You can go there, just check that out. And you'll find all my articles published in there, along with some of my YouTube videos and some more advanced content as well. But let's jump right back into this video. I've already done part one, part two of my top 100 players, or top 200 players for the 2021 NFL season. Today's part three, we're covering players number 100 through numbers 50 or 51, however you want to look at it. And then we'll have a part four coming out uh, probably the next day. And we'll just wrap this up in top 200 and we get to finish this list. Now you can, again, read the originals, the actual articles themselves. If you want to take the time to read through them. As you're going to see in this video, you can read them on my Substack page, which is, again, it's a newsletter. You can find the link to that on my Twitter page. So right now I'm just going to share my screen. So if you're, on, if you're listening to the podcast, you don't actually get to see it. But again, on YouTube, you will be able to see the actual play rankings for yourself. So let's hop right into the rankings for today. Number 100, player number 100 on the top 200 is Andrew Whitworth, offensive tackle for the Los Angeles Rams. He's offensive tackle 10 in these rankings, the 10th ranked offensive tackle on the top 200. And he's up here because I know he's 39 years old. I know he's missed a lot of games over the past two years. 2019 was not a good season for Andrew Whitworth. He was really good last year. And I understand that there was a perception that he wasn't or a perception that he was declining significantly. He was no longer an elite tackle. He was good last year. And again, he missed time. It's probably going to be anything that continues to haunt him for the rest of his NFL career because of his age at this point. But he's still a really good tackle. And when healthy, he's easily a top 10 tackle. Number 99, I have Aaron Jones. He's running back eight on these rankings. I could have had him as high as running back six, in my opinion. I don't think I would go top five, but I have him up at 99 overall. And he's up here, Christine. He's just productive in both facets of the game, both as a pass catcher and as a running back. He's had two really good years now where he's been elite. And best year was probably 2019 for him, but again, he's been up towards the top five running backs close to them the past two years. And yeah, I could have had him as high as six. I have him at eight here. This list is based purely on projections for 2021. So you can have players who didn't do well in 2020, have them fairly high on this ranking because it's not based purely on your 2020 tape or your 2020 production. It's based on a projection that includes everything from your supporting cast to previous success to physical traits and talents, everything like that. Number 98, it's safety Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams is my 11th safety appearing on these rankings. Uh, Sam Monson for PFF actually had him on the PFF 50 for this year. So I'm clearly not as high on Marcus Williams as uh, Sam Monson is, but I still have him at 98 in the top 100. The safety class is just really low. There's a lot of safeties in the top 100. It's been a fantastic group. I know a lot of them are going to get paid in the next year or so as they hit free agency or come up for contract extensions. Number 97, edge 15, it's Brian Burns for Carolina. People are talking about this guy potentially being a breakout candidate for 2021. He was very good this past season. He needs to improve as a run defender right now. He's more of just a, I don't want to say one-dimensional pass rusher, but he's primarily focused on rushing the passer. I could see him improve significantly as a run defender and then jump into that top 10 category. But for now, top 15 with a good chance that he improves and moves up in the rankings next year. Number 96, Corey Lindsay. My center one is at 96. Not a lot of love to the center position. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Part of that is because I don't think that there's a player at the position right now that's so dominant or so generally, generationally talented that they will just top other players in the league. Again, I probably should have gone higher with this. Previously, I had done a top, I think I done a top 100 after the 2020 season, and I had Lindsay at, four, at 45, so I've almost dropped him double his ranking. Well, I dropped him over double his ranking from last time from 45 to 96. You're probably not like that. I understand why, but I still have Corey Lindsay in the top 100 at 96 as my top center. Number 95 is Marcus May. He's safety number 10 for the New York Jets. Correct the top 100 because he's so versatile. I know he's stepping into that Jamal Adams role I asked you to do a lot. No, he's not been Jamal Adams, but he's been close to him. He's been very close to him to the fact that the Jets do not regret trading Jamal Adams because of how much they got in return for him, plus how good Marcus May has been stepping into that role. Now, they didn't give him a contract extension he was looking for this past year, which kind of surprised me because of how much he does for that defense. 
we'll see if he's allowed to continue doing that in the coming future and see if the Jets give him an extension at some point next offseason or at some point in the near future. Number 94, this is where we get into a bunch of players who are veterans who are kind of declining but also returning from injury. This is where the projection part of it comes into play. Number 94, I have Von Miller. He's edge 14. There was a lot of hype around Von Miller coming to last offseason. The belief was that he would rebound in 2020 and have one of the best seasons of his career because of the shape he was in. And he ended up missing the entire year. Even in 2019, it was not a good year for Von Miller. It was probably the worst year of his career outside of the one year he was suspended and missed games. You know, he was not playing up to his standards. He was still a good pass rusher, but he was no longer that elite top five guy he'd been perennially before that. And we'll see at this point, yeah, he's 32 years old. We'll see if he's able to rebound and recover some of that previous form or not. But right now, he's still a top 100 player and a top 15 edge rusher in my book until proven otherwise. Number 93, interior defense lineman, eighth overall. It's Fletcher Cox for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, people will have him usually in the top five. And I totally understand it, but the two, that past two years have not been good for Fletcher Cox. The previous three or four years before that, he was dominant. He was top three. He was maybe only second to Aaron Donald during that time. But he's not been nearly as good the past couple of years, which is why he falls all the way down to 93. He's just struggled to keep up with the sacks. He's not gotten nearly as many pressures, and I think that's the key here. He's not gotten nearly as many pressures as he has in past years. I think PFF even has it where – he has not gotten as many pressures in the past two years as he had in 2018. I think that's what the numbers are say. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe that's where it's at right now. He's just not been that dominant player the past two years. He's still a very good player, don't get me wrong. He's still a top 10 defensive tackle or interior defensive lineman, but he's not an all-pro anymore. Now, could that change this year? Absolutely, but for now, I have him down 93. Number 92, I have J.J. Watt. He's edge rusher 13, so him, Bob Miller, and Fletcher Cox all kind of stacked up close together. Watt is at edge 13 because, yes, he did not have the sack production last year, but he's still a tackle machine. And he's still one of the best run defensive players in the NFL. So he's really good at defending the run. He draws a lot of double teams. And ESPN stats had an info had the statistic that he has drawn for the past year. Nearly 30% of the time he was double teamed, which is the most among all edge rushers. I mean, think about it. This guy's a former three-time defensive player of the year, up in his 30s now, coming off a lot of injuries, banged up, and he's facing more double teams than any edge rusher in the league. That's kind of ridiculous. More than Miles Garrett, more than T.J. Watt, more than Khalil Mack. So if he goes to Arizona and he works with Chandler Jones, he's not taking as many double teams, I think you'll see a significantly improved player based on his numbers from last year. And even just based on his numbers from last year, he's still a top 100 player, and he's edge 13 here in the rankings. Number 91, we're getting a lot of edge players here. This is edge 12. It's Shaquille Bear from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Did not have as many sacks or as many pressures this past year as he did in 2019, but was still a very good edge rusher. Uh, still towards the top of the class. Not a top 10 guy, not a perennial all pro, but still a very qualified edge rusher. And we saw what he did with that defense front last year. And again, they're getting all the players back this year. So Tampa Bay should have a very similar dominant force up front for this coming season. Number 90 overall is Jack Conklin. He's offensive tackle number nine. Conklin, it's hard to tell with him. He's a bit overrated. And I hate to say that because he's been an all-pro a couple of times now. But he's never been at the same level as a Ryan Ramchek or a Mitchell Schwartz. He's just never been at that level. You know, he was an all-pro this past year. He's never quite reached the heights of those players, which is why he's down 90, despite being a first-team all-pro this past year. Number 89, cornerback for the Denver Broncos. Cornerback nine on these rankings, Bryce Callahan. A bit of a surprise, I know, for a lot of people. This guy came in the league as a slot corner for a little while there in Chicago. Did not play in 2019 because of injuries, I believe. And came back this past year and was very good. I mean, he, he held quarterbacks who targeted him to a completion percentage below 50%. Or actually, uh, below 55%, excuse me, in a passer rating below 48. So he was just dominant as a cornerback this past year. I understand he doesn't have the name recognition. I understand he's probably possibly going to get traded this year. Might not even play a ton given how stacked the Denver cornerback room is. But he was so good last year, I can't leave him off the top 10 corners. I can't leave him out of the top 100. Number 89, 88, excuse me, Justin Herbert. He's QB 10. So he barely cracks the top 10 among quarterbacks. One reason being is that I just don't – quarterbacks in the second years are really difficult to tell. It's hard to tell who's going to have a consistent year, who's going to stay the same, who's going to take that next step, who's going to take a step back. 
So I'm going to have him at 10. It's a bit of a conservative ranking. I understand that. He could go probably as high as 7, probably go as low as 13 or 14. But I like, really, I really like what I saw from last year. Now you've added a better offensive line, significantly better offensive line than you had last season, which was the flaw for forever in Los Angeles. Him playing behind that line, I really trust Justin Herbert. He's number 88 on the rankings, QB number 10. Number 87, I'm going to start speeding this up a little bit so I can make sure I finish this recording in under like an hour. Demario Davis is number 87. He's linebacker six. So again, not a lot of linebackers made the rankings. I think he only had 12 or 13 of them total. Demario Davis was an all pro in 2019. He was still good this past year, but not as good. But he's really peaked towards the end of his career here the past three years or so. Has been dominant play from top 10 linebacker level play. He comes in at linebacker six. Number 86 in the rankings, Darius Smith, edge rusher for the Green Bay Packers. He's the 11th edge on this list. And, boy, I did not like this one. I wanted to have him so much higher. I wanted to have him top seven edge. That's what I wanted to have Darius Smith as. Somehow he ended up at 11. He's been really good. He was dominant in 2019. This past year was not as good, but it was still a very good season for him in terms of rushing the passer, getting pressures. I just think if you have a second edge rusher next to him, like he had Preston Smith in 2019, if you get something like that, for Sean Gary becomes that guy in 2021, Darius Smith's number will jump back up again. He'll end up probably in the top 50. But for now, he's 86. 85, Demarcus Lawrence. This is a player I know a lot of people love to hate on because he signed a massive contract and he has not had the sack numbers the past two years. What people overlook is that he's one of the best run defenders in the NFL. He is a stud run defender. And you need that in a defensive end because you have some guys who are defensive ends who just focus on rushing the passer and they're one dimensional and they get their defense gets gouged up by running backs who are talented because you have a guy who's not looking to stop the run. The Marcus Lawrence can rush the passer. He can stop the run. He's just not gotten a lot of pressures, a lot of sack, well, not a lot of sacks these past couple of years. Cause one, he's working alone. There's really not a lot, anyone on the defensive line for Dallas right now outside of Lawrence who probably scares any offensive line right now. Uh, maybe Michael, Michael Parsons in this route to a linebacking court can kind of fix that. But for now, it's just been a one-man army up front for Demarcus Lawrence and the Dallas Cowboys. One that knocks against him and why he's edge 10, not any higher. He doesn't play nearly as many snaps as most other edge rushers. He doesn't even come close in most cases. So the fact that he does not play close to 1,000 snaps a year definitely hurts him in these rankings. I have him at 85 overall. At 84, wide receiver 13. Again, there a guy who I want to move up higher but just couldn't. Calvin Ridley at 84. I know a lot of people are picking him to be a top five receiver this year, to be, have a breakout uh, campaign now that he's wide receiver one in Atlanta with Julio Jones gone. But last year, he was still pretty darn good. I mean, he, he kind of had his right campaign last year, if you want to ask me. Uh, 90 receptions last year, 1,374 receiving yards. It's hard to pass on a guy who's so talented like this. But again, he's only wide receiver 13, and I wanted to get him to the top 10, but I just couldn't because of how stacked the wide receiver position is right now. 83 overall, edge nine, it's Chase Young. And I kind of went back and forth on Chase Young. I had him outside of the top 10. I had him inside the top 10. He settles down at number nine. We saw a lot of promise from him last year. Again, I'm not always in on these guys in their second season. Sometimes I know they take that step forward. Something like a TJ Watt took a step forward in the second year, or guys will take a step back occasionally. Chase Young showed tons of promise last year. they will see more snaps this year. He's going to be a more developed player this year. He's going to understand a lot more about the NFL game. There's no reason to believe that he should not be a top 100 player this year. So he's 83 for me. Number 82, and this has to do a lot with volume. Number 82 is Jonathan Taylor. He's running back seven. With Carson Wentz at quarterback, and the type of offensive line you have in Indianapolis, you're going to run the ball a lot. You're going to try to control the game clock. You're going to try to grind down defenses. Jonathan Taylor is the perfect guy for that. He's done that his entire football life. Dating back to his time in Wisconsin, he was dominant doing the same thing. He was good. He's really good as a rookie, especially down the stretch in the final six games or so, uh, taking over for the Apples Colts. I expect him to have a dominant performance for most of this year. There's going to be a, the occasional rough game for him, but for most of the year, I expect him to be a top ten running back. He is running back seven here on these rankings. And then eighty one, quarterback nine, Dak Prescott. I went back and forth about Dak as well because Dak was on pace to sit, like, throw, in, throw for over 6,000 yards this past season. He was on pace to have a just record-smashing campaign before getting hurt. So I went back and forth on where to put him here. He's dealt with some shoulder issues. The off, this offseason, he's had that whole rehab on his leg. 
I don't know what his mobility is going to look like. I don't know how much he's going to trust his offensive line with all the injuries that have gone on. Zach Martin's not going to play tonight. Uh, this is the day of the Tampa Bay game, by the way. It's Thursday. Zach Martin's not playing tonight. Lyle Collins has been banged up. I don't know if I just trust the health of Dallas. So I've got Dak at 81 because, again, the supporting cast plays a role in all this. He's got some really good receivers in Michael Gallup, Omar Cooper, C.D. Lamb. But, again, it's the health. It's the offensive line. I'm leaving him at 81, although I admit he could go higher. He could probably go as high as QB7 as well. But I'm going to leave him at QB9 and at 81. So now we take our next step forward into the top 80. And again, injuries alter my top 200 here. I was making this list. I began making this list back in July and writing the full article for it. And then I released this piece in segments. I released it in 20 player segments as, as articles on my newsletter. So it kind of came out slowly. And there was some outdated information. So I have Michael Thomas at eight, despite the fact that he's going to open the year on the pup list and miss five games. Uh, he's still a top five receiver when healthy. That's pretty simple. I mean, he's the only player and the only receiver since Jerry Rice to win the Offensive Player of the Year award. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. <laughs> but yeah, Michael Thomas is one of the best receivers in the NFL when healthy. He's 80 overall here, wide receiver 12, despite the fact that I know he's going to miss a significant number of games. The player right in front of him, I think I talked about this on a previous podcast. A guy was going to miss probably even more games and probably should be lower, but I didn't know until after posting this article that he was going to miss a lot of time. Stephon Gilmore was going to miss the first six games for New England. He's 79 overall. He's cornerback eight for me. Again, would be lower if I had known he was going to end up on the pup list ahead of time. 78, it's in our corner. Corner seven, it's Darius Williams from the Los Angeles Rams. Super productive the past two years, despite playing a limited role in 2019, really stepping up this past year. He and Jalen Ramsey are arguably the best cornerback duo in the NFL. Number 77, a big project, projection here, but it's Quinn Williams for the New York Jets. Interior defense lineman number seven for me. I expect him to have the breakout campaign this year. We saw, it turn, we saw him turn it on in the second half of last season. And now I expect him to have a full year where he's a dominant force and finishes one of the 10 best defensive tackles in the NFL. 76, a guy that's really close to my heart, one of my favorite players is Mike Evans. He's wide receiver 11 on these rankings. I really wanted to put inside the top 10. Uh, same with Calvin Ridley. I just couldn't, though. There's really just not a lot of space. If you sit down and try to do a top 100 with all these receivers, it's just difficult. You can't fit 15 of them in the top 100. It's just not possible. So we end up with Mike Evans at wide receiver 11, number 76 on the rankings. Number 75, another aging pass rusher. It's Cameron Jordan. Guy has had a borderline Hall of Fame career. A very talented editor, still productive last year, but only seven and a half sacks. And he's, got, he's hit seven and a half sacks, I think maybe three or four times in his career. But he hasn't done it in a couple of years. He'd been above 10 for a while. He dipped down to seven and a half this past season and just did not look like his usual dominant self. Now, granted, the Saints still had a very good defense, but he was not the same level he had been in the past couple of years. Hopefully, he rebounds and, get back, and gets back to that point this year because the Saints are going to need all the talent they can get to stay competent and compete with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC South. 74, it's Keenan Allen for the Los Angeles Chargers. Did not have a ton of yards last year. We're still getting into the flow with uh, Justin Herbert. I expect that to be connected by now. Everything's going to work out fine for them. He's going to get back to over having over 1,000 yards this season. And he's route running. I think everyone talks about route running with Keenan Allen. It's one of the best in the NFL. So he cracks it. the top 10 for wide receivers. He's wide receiver 10 and 74 in the rankings. And again, I'm going to start speeding it up here so I can make sure I can get this video done. John Johnson III, safety for the Cleveland Browns. He's at 73. He's safety nine in these rankings. Huge, huge and underrated offseason uh, off signing for the Cleveland Browns. Going to make their defense so much better. Number 72, running back six, it's Saquon Barkley. I could have him as low as running back nine, if I'm being honest. But we know how talented he is. His rookie season was phenomenal. It's a make or break year for Daniel Jones. They had some, they've had some wide receivers and tight ends to the depth chart. If Barkley can stay healthy, he should have a very good year. That's the big if. 71, interior defense lineman number six, great. Jarrett, great. Jarrett's had a bit of an up and down run the past four years or so. But when he's at his peak, great. Jarrett is arguably a top five defensive tackle in the NFL. He's defensive lineman number six here on the ranking. Number 70 overall, cornerback number six. People are not going to like this one. It's Tredavious White. I know Bill Spence are probably rolling over in their graves. Bill Spence, Bill Spence are rolling over their graves. They're shouting at their screens. They're getting ready to go on Twitter and complain. But Stravius White was not 
as good this past season as he's been the past several years. 2019 was very good for him when he led the league for interceptions with six. His rookie season was one of the best seasons he's had. This past year just was not as good. He was still very good. He's a top six corner on these rankings, but he just was not as good as the five players ahead of him. And he hit 70 overall just because this is when it gets really tight. You really have to start squeezing in a bunch of all pros, a bunch of perennial candidates to be all pros in the top 70 here. And White comes in at number 70. 69, Tristan Wurst for Tampa Bay Buccaneers, one of the best rookie seasons by an offensive tackle in recent history. Really deserving an all-pro selection, and a huge reason why they won the Super Bowl. Number 68, quarterback eight, it's Lamar Jackson. People will probably say this is too low for him. I'd argue this is just right, considering where he was last year as a quarterback. Running game, of course, he's better than most running backs in the NFL in terms of running and creating space on the field and making dynamic plays. His passing game just wasn't there last year. And Baltimore's tried to add more weapons around him. They retained Mark Andrews. Just was not throwing the ball out well last year and, and not getting it downfield enough. We'll see if that changes here this season. But again, he has to step up his role in the passing game if he wants to continue being viewed as a top five quarterback in that MVP race and remain a top 50 player. So right now I'll have him at 68 for the rankings. 67, Adrian Emos is what safety number eight. He comes in at 67 for the Green Bay Packers, the better of the safeties in Green Bay. He's highly underrated. I just don't think people realize how good he is. He's better than Eddie Jackson is. Eddie Jackson, the guy in Chicago who he left to pair up with Darnell Savage in Green Bay, and he's been the best of those two duos both times. James Bradbury, 66. He's cornerback five for me. Breakout season this past year. I can understand if you want to have Tredavious White ahead of him, but you have to realize they are separated by four spots in the rankings. In one position, one spot in their positional rankings. It's not that big of a jump, but James Bradbury coming off a fantastic year with the New York Giants. Darren Waller, 65, tight end number three. Was it ever in any doubt he'd be tight end three? He's phenomenal. He's playing, he's playing with, he plays like a wide receiver, almost gets the production like a wide receiver. A phenomenal player who's going to produce over a thousand yards a year in and year out. 64 overall, Ryan Tannehill, his QB7. Again, very close to Lamar Jackson in these rankings, so don't freak out too much. And again, separated by four spots in the rankings, I believe, and just one spot in their positional rankings. Tannehill has benefited quite a bit from playing in the offense he's played with, with Tennessee. But at the same point, it's hard to deny how efficient he's been as a passer in the past couple of years, which is why he's 64 on the rankings in QB7. All right, 63, Daniel Hunter, edge seven for me. I'm projecting a huge comeback season for him. Obviously, he missed all last year, but when he's healthy, he had two back-to-back 14-and-a-half sack seasons. If you can get that production from him again this year, he's easily going to earn the 63 ranking and a top-10 edge spot. Uh, number 62, wide receiver 9, DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf is possibly the most physically gifted wide receiver in the NFL, probably up there with Tyreek Hill. The reason he's that wide receiver 9 is just you don't understand. It's so stacked towards the top here. And Metcalf, while he's a great dynamic threat to go downfield, there are some limitations to this game still that he has to work out before climbing into that top five range. And then 61, guard number six, Joel Batonio for the Cleveland Browns. He's starting to get there in age, but he's been so consistent year in and year out, and he remains to be a consistent pillar of that offense. So he's going to stay here on the top 161. Again, I'm not, I'm a Cleveland, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I do not like the Cleveland Browns. But I respect Joel Batonio because of how good he's been for so long. All right, on to the top 60. Garrett Bowles, offensive tackle number seven. I'm curious to see if the rules reverting, like the rules ver- called re- the rules regarding holding, when they revert back to how they were called before this pandemic season. I'm interested to see if that will impact Garrett Bowles because they called them a special way this past year. They are much more lenient for offensive linemen than they will be this year. And Garrett Bowles is known for committing holding calls, committing penalties on the offensive line. The fact that he had more leeway is what allowed him to shine this past year. I'll be interested to see if refereeing going back to how they used to will impact his spot, impact his ability to remain a top 10 tackle. 59, guard five, it's Brandon Scherf from Washington. He's been on good throughout his career, but last year was arguably his best season. He's going to be a, a free agent next year. <laughs> going to be one of the best free agents in that class, probably. And the guy's going to be highly sought after. Number 58, edge six, Chandler Jones, another guy who missed most last year. 
when Chandler Jones is healthy, he's a perennial candidate to win the sack record or win the sack title. He's always up there. Even dating back to his days in New England, he's just one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. Not one of the most complete pass rushers, does not play the run as well as some other guys, but is so dominant as a sack artist that if he's healthy and playing alongside J.J. Watt, with all the additions they made to that linebacker room in Arizona, even if the secondary stinks, he's still probably going to be a top 10 edge rusher. I'm at edge six and 58 overall in the rankings. Guard four, and remember 57 overall, Wyatt Teller, who's the best guard in the NFL last year, but he'd never been close to being a Pro Bowl guard before that. So he had a, human, a tremendous breakout season where he was an all-pro. He plays in an offense that's run-heavy, which is perfect for him. I just don't know if he's going to be able to repeat that as the best guard in the NFL this coming season, which is why I haven't I had guard for it, but these seven overall in the rankings, I feel like that's pretty fair. 56 overall safety, seven, Jamal Adams. Two years ago, he would have been safety one. The issue is going to Seattle. He had his worst year in coverage ever. And I get he was dealing with injuries throughout the year. I understand that. It was not all his fault. But he struggled with coverage throughout the year. The way he was utilized in that defense reflected poorly on him because he was rushing the passer so much. But it was almost like they were trying to hide him in coverage at times. So there are a lot of issues going back and forth with how he played in that defense, his injuries, uh, the ability to adjust the role he's playing in that defense. Just not a fantastic year for Jamal Adams. He ends up at 57 still because I know he's capable of playing much better than he did last year and 56 overall in the ranking. Another CLC, offensive tackle six, Dwayne Brown comes in at 55 on the ranking. Dwayne Brown is highly underrated, been underrated since his time in Houston, still one of the best left tackles in football. I'm surprised Seattle did not give him an extension. I understand that age is a concern for him. He's almost 36. But he's the best offensive line Russell Wilson has ever played with. Yeah, they gave Jamal Adams an extension instead of Dwayne Brown. 54 on the ranking, wide receiver eight, Allen Robinson. There are a lot of people who probably believe should be higher on this list. Again, wide receiver is just stacked in the NFL right now. Allen Robinson, he's up there. He's arguably a top five receiver year to year. But I just don't see him having that kind of production this year because he's playing with Andy Dalton and Justin Fields. And not a lot of depth at the wide receiver room else. There's not a lot of our guys in that offense I'm afraid of. Outside of Allen Robinson and maybe David Montgomery. So he comes in at wide receiver eight, number 54 overall. 53 overall, Teron Armstead, Armstead, offensive tackle five from the New Orleans Saints. One of the best left tackles in football for the past decade. The issue is he always misses games throughout the year. They're changing quarterbacks. James Winston's going in. Joe Reese is going out. It'll be interesting to see if changing quarterbacks actually affects how Armstead plays, but he is one of the best tackles in football from the past decade, or at least the past five years. Speaking of the past decade, Harrison Smith, one of the best saviors from the past decade, guy who should have been on the all-decade team but wasn't, comes in at number 52 on the ranking. See, safety six. I could have had him as high as safety four. Harrison Smith is one of my favorite players in the NFL because he's so dynamic. He's good in pass coverage. He's good against the run. He can rush the quarterback well. He's so good at disguising what he's going to do. Harrison Smith is safety six and one of the best players in the NFL. Another safety comes at 51. Justin Simmons, safety five for the Denver Broncos. He was not as good this past season as he was in 2019, but still easily a top five safety in the NFL. Surprisingly good against the run. I don't think people acknowledge that enough. Justin Simmons, who recently got a big time extension. He is crucial what Denver's doing right now. I understand that Bradley Chubb and Von Miller are like the life of the party, but Justin Simmons is arguably the best player on the defense right now. And then one that they're building around defensively. So Simmons has to have a crucial role in these rankings. And if you're watching the YouTube video, you can see who number 50 is, but I'm not going to say it out loud here. I'm actually going to end the podcast right here because my voice is going. So we're going to stop here and come back tomorrow to do the last 50 of these rankings. Again, you can actually find this article on the website. You just go to my, YouTube, uh, go to my Twitter page. The pinned tweet is a link to my Substack account, which is basically a newsletter you can subscribe to for free just by putting your email in and you get updates on all my latest content, all my latest articles. You can find all these articles on that account. You just have to go click on the pin tweet at my Twitter page, Sam underscore Teats 33 is the account, and hope to see you all there. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video and wrap up this podcast. Have a good day.